Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party video. Thanks to the guys over at Robot Kingdom. In today's video I'm taking a look at the DNA Designs Arashi. This is their recolor of their bludgeon mold made to look like Bonsai Tron. A quick look around the gorgeous artwork on this piece. Love what they do and there we go. There he is with his grimacing red face uh arashi um, i'm not entirely sure uh, what that uh, what that actually means in japanese but i'm sure it means something uh, fortunately me and susan we parted ways but i really missed the mold i really missed having that kind of samurai presence on my shelf so i decided to dip back in and get a rashi. Now we actually have a difference in the inner packaging with this figure. Uh, DNA have done a few mods from Susan through to Arashi. He has a better design of inner packaging and this is in order to prevent the feet painting damage during transportation. Because if you can just see the feet down there, I don't know if you can see through here, uh, they've completely painted up those feet. It's basically just a wrap in a film within the plastic clamshell but it works it protects all of the paint out of his plastic prison we do get a nice variety of accessories we get the cannon which has to be mounted on him in his tank mode we get his sword and sheath again really lovely sculpting on that blade really nice paint on there i love this kind of bluey teal it's not quite teal, is it? But it's a very nice paint, nonetheless. We get the tippy, stabby, stabby. Uh, again, can be mounted as a gun. There we get the alternative faceplate in here. We also get some small pegs to peg up those unsightly screw holes i'll touch on the secondary mask here when we get to change the head out we get two of the aerials which pop on his tank mode and we also get replacement shoulder joints for Suzanu. if you have Suzanu, these are much stronger uh, this is a better shoulder structure all together we actually get instructions telling you how these can be installed but it's nice that they've included these mod cons uh, with the new figure and here we have him out of the packaging i love these backgrounds that they include if you've got space in your detail to display them then they do look really nice it's him and Suzanu are both very very huge shelf presence now backgrounds aside doesn't he look ruddy awesome. What a gorgeous paint job they've done with this guy. I love the little upgrades. Uh, this chainmail at the front especially looks incredible. Everything seems to be tighter on him than it was on Suzanu. Suzanu wasn't a bad figure. It was a very good figure, uh, but it wasn't without its faults and they have improved. This is in essence a slight remold retool and repaint but they've done a really good job let's take a closer look at that face sculpt really bold green eyes there i love this almost kind of radioactive neon green very evangelion to look at really nice painted gold like i said the chain mail is a very very well done piece we have these hip skirts that come out to the side again on hinges we have the track and as we get further down we have those fully painted up feet a huge chunk of die cast there big lump to balance this guy let's check out these inner workings of the arms this is the whole new shoulder piece that uh, they were talking about uh, it definitely holds together better really nice ratchets on there now lots of motion nice rotation in there nice bend on that elbow there we have the articulated hands all ball jointed with the ability to spread 
and bend rotation on that wrist. No up and down motion though, but beggars can't be choosers. The head have some nice upwards motion. Nice downwards motion there. We can go left and right, and we can tilt to the side. The waist is somewhat hindered by this backpack, but if we parts form just a little bit and remove said backpack, we've got all of this space on the back here. So we can now get a full range of motion. We can get an abdominal crunch as well and go up and down and just push us back in there to secure it into place. We can move the legs. Ah, oh, crazy good ratchets on those forwards. And back is somewhat hindered by the butt skirt, but we can come out to the side. Knee rotation, upper thigh rotation. Really nice deep bend on that knee. Gain lots of nice stiff joints in there to get crazy range off this guy. We have a nice heel spur. We have the ability to go up and down on the foot and the toe. We get some pivoting out to the side. Unfortunately, there's no rotation on that lower foot, but of course we do get the additional rotation on that knee. So although he is a samurai, he has the articulation of a ninja. He looks outstanding, doesn't he? In my opinion, if the robot yields a sword, I honestly think they should be able to hold it with both hands and look very natural in doing it. And Arashi really does tick that box. If we just take a closer look at the molding on the hands, if we just unplug this, we have a nice groove cut out for where the guns and sword lie. Uh, there is a small slot in the base there. It's actually a kind of C-shaped peg. So one side pegs in and the other side sits over the outer part of the hand and the result is a very secure fitting and allows us to get a very natural pose. Now there's also a fair bit of play in this part of the wrist. It really does help when we're bending that arm all the way up and over, kind of acting as kind of a secondary joint. I am loving these new shoulders though. There's a lot of potential in there. It's just a matter of messing about with it and finding something that works for yourself. And now if we bring that backpack section back in, and we can just pop it on there like this, plug that in. I love how much power there is in the spring on this. You just <laughs> and of course his sword gun can also be stored in the back there. Now, as you can see, I haven't added all of the turret sections and everything in yet. Uh, that can all be added when we go to tank mode, just so you can see what they look like. But oh, it's a very good looking figure. Uh, you have to work the joints. You have to make them work for you. You have to negotiate them. So like, if you move the legs forward, you have to move the skirt, you have to move the hips. Every joint holds into place, but it's getting everything to work together. They've packed this full of articulation, which isn't a bad thing, but at the same time, we've got a figure here who's covered in armor. So it's negotiating the armor with the articulation to get a successful pose. At the moment, he's tilted backwards. You have to work those joints in, twist them around, and you can get some really good stability, but you do have to work it. Right, let's see about removing his face. I can just move it forwards. It's just tabbed in at a couple of points. And there we have a face without a face. If we look at the secondary face, love that sculpting on there, all those wires. Incredibly nice sculpt. Just push and tab that in and that's the face I am going to be keeping on there. That is incredible. Here he is alongside MP10, just to give you an idea of how he scales. Personally, I think he is of a masterpiece standard. 
I am going to display him with my masterpiece figures, but at the same time, people may just want to kind of incorporate them into their classics or generations collection. I mean, he could always square off against the likes of Springer. That's still a very good scale, in my opinion. Now, as gorgeous as Arashi looks, let's get him transformed up into his alt mode. Start off by removing his sword hilt and his tank backpack. Come around to the head. The head is going to push down and at the same time it's going to push backwards slightly. <laughs> he looks funny. Uh, <laughs> these need to come up and they need to rotate around. I love the fact that we can actually move this part of the arm upwards as well. It really does help with that posing and we get some disappearing detail. Anyway, I'm digressing. We want to rotate these arms. So this joint is facing upwards with the screw facing upwards. And this joint here, the upper bicep rotation, I guess, as opposed to the shoulder rotation, that needs to be facing forwards as well. So we've got the two screws and this screw here. The arms can then be pushed and collapsed into this shoulder socket. There's a small rotating hinge on the inside here. Pull this out and make sure we rotate this so it's at the bottom of this joint. That way all of this back piece can line up. You compress and collapse those fingers down. Bring this part down over the hand. Straighten up this piece here and then bring that over on the hand. And using this joint here and the joint on the actual forearm itself, bend that completely over until it locks into place. And there's a tab here and a slot on that top shoulder pad. Push and tab all of that into position and just make sure all of this is completely square. And with all of these joints nice and square, we can use these shoulder joints to lift this up. And as you can see, we have a tab up at the top and one at the bottom, which allows these to tab in successfully. And then just taking a look at the top, we have this flap and these two pegs. Need to really push and work that in there. And that will hold everything into place. There's a lot of tabs. You have to kind of tweak them slightly, uh, but once you're there, it does line up pretty darn nicely. Now lift up his skirt Woo! Ooh, uh, and just move these parts to the side. Now this piece here again is a new modified tab. The foot will close together. This piece will push down. This whole shin guard we will lift up and rock backwards so there's lots of clearance space you need to push the heel spurs around mine are incredibly tight and then this toe piece will fold up and over and collapse onto here collapse this part down rotate this around and then rotate these inner legs, rotate these wheels outwards. And then we're gonna bring the track over. Tab in and interlink nicely. Push and slide this torso piece upwards so it's fully extended. Make sure that this piece comes unlocked and we can then unfold these leg panels out to either side. If you have the sword attachment up and out, rotate that around so it's now completely flush. These pieces here are on a rotating hinge. Make sure that this sliding peg is all the way over to that side. We can then use this hinge here, bring this all the way up, collapsing it down and then having those pieces in and there's a small circular hole just on the underside of that hinge should tab in with this torso fully extended it's going to come up over this gap and it's going to come back down on 
to the other side. These are just going to slide and interlock. And there's also a circular tab there. That's going to line up as well. Pushing in nice and firmly. This part here just lifts up, unfolds and comes down. Again, we've got two circular tabs there. So that can tab in to the rear of those tank walls. Uh, once everything's lined up, it looks the bee's knees, but it's getting everything to line up. It's a bit of a mission. This has taken me off air about 10 minutes to get things to line up. You know, it's a brilliant idea, but the execution I think could have been a fraction better. There's so much going on here and things don't always tab in and line up as we would like them to. And make sure everything's tabbed in underneath here. Uh, lots of uh, slack at the back here, but that can just be bent round as and when. And everything's tabbed in firmly on top. We can then bring our turret back in. That's just going to tab into position. The sword can slide. All the way in we can plug the aerials into either side lift this piece up the gun is going to separate because we have these parts on it here this can rotate around and form a lovely little chain gun which can be placed on the front like that these then separate there's this rotating hinge which allows us to just slide those in and rotate those down either side it's beginning to look a lot like bonsai tron and there we have him fully transformed up into his tank mode now i love the robot mode i love the tank mode but the journey between the two uh, not fun at all it's a matter of lining everything up and as soon as you tab one tab in another one will pop out uh, the execution just isn't as nice as i would like unfortunately if a toy like this isn't fun if you're worried about moving it around because the joints will pop out uh, it kind of saps the fun <laughs> out of it but it does definitely look the part we've got nice rotation on this ratcheted joint still have that spring action there which is a very welcome piece. Uh, it's definitely a good looker and a very good size, but its bot mode is definitely where this figure excels. As I said, the tank mode is nice, but it's that journey getting there. Now, if you decide Arashi is the bot for you, I've included a link in the description below. Hope you found this video useful. If you have, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, share, and of course, subscribe. And until next time, from myself and Arashi, aka Masterpiece Bonsai Tron, ah, goodbye.